Picture this. In a domain where delays are almost treated as a law of nature, one of Europe's most complex defense programs suddenly hints at the opposite outcome. The French Navy has been told that the final Barracuda-class nuclear attack submarine could arrive a full year earlier, potentially entering operational service in 2029 instead of 2030. That may sound like a minor scheduling tweak, but in undersea warfare, a single year is not just a year. It can be the difference between continuous presence and a dangerous gap, between deterrence that is assumed and deterrence that must be improvised. To understand why this matters, start with the unglamorous reality of submarine fleets. Availability is everything, and availability is cruelly mathematical. A submarine is either at sea, preparing to go to sea, recovering from patrol, or locked in maintenance. Even a highly capable boat contributes nothing if it is not deployable. France's older Rubis-class submarines have been serving since the early 1980s, and as hulls age, maintenance time stretches, spare parts become harder to manage, and each additional month in dock quietly erodes the number of days the fleet can actually spend on patrol. So when planners talk about avoiding capability gaps, they are not speaking in abstract terms. They are talking about the cold fact that you can lose strategic options simply because metal fatigues and schedules slip. That is exactly why the Barracuda program, also known as the Souffron class, is so central. It is not merely a replacement, it is a generational reset of France's attack submarine force. The lead boat Suffren entered service after a long proving period that focused on what matters most underwater, acoustic discretion and the integration of combat systems. Then came Duguay-Trouin and then Tourville, accepted into service in mid-2025, marking the moment when the program stopped being a promise and became an operational reality. Three boats in service means France has reached the halfway point of its planned six-submarine fleet. And in the submarine world, halfway is not symbolic. Halfway means you can start planning deployments, training pipelines, and maintenance cycles around the new class rather than keeping one foot stuck in the old era. Now consider the industrial signal embedded in this news. The reported acceleration is not framed as a political wish. It is tied to productivity gains at Naval Group's Cherbourg Shipyard and improved coordination across the nuclear propulsion supply chain. Cherbourg is not just any shipyard. It is one of the most sensitive industrial sites in Europe a place where security and complexity go hand in hand. Nuclear submarines are not assembled like commercial ships. The workforce, tooling, quality control, and regulatory oversight create a tempo that is hard to speed up without breaking something. So the key question becomes, if the schedule really is compressing, what changed? Part of the answer is repetition. Early boats in a class are always slower. The design matures, workers learn where tolerances bite, suppliers stabilize, and processes become less artisanal and more production-like. That does not mean mass production because each submarine remains a bespoke machine, but it does mean fewer surprises, and surprises are what kill schedules. Another part of the answer is visible in a milestone the program reached in December 2025, the reactor startup or divergence of the fourth submarine, De Grasse. Divergence is not a ceremonial step, it is a point of no return. Once the reactor goes critical, the program moves into a different phase of oversight, testing, and readiness because the reactor remains active throughout the boat's service life. When divergence happens on schedule, it is a strong indicator that the program's most sensitive technical pathway is functioning as intended. The reported planning assumptions suggest De Grasse could be delivered in 2026, followed by Rubis around 2028 and Casabianca shortly thereafter, enabling the full six-boat fleet to be operational before the decade closes. Again, look at what that implies. It is not just one submarine arriving earlier. It is an entire endgame tightening, a closing of the window in which old Rubis-class boats would have had to remain reliable beyond what aging platforms like to tolerate. In other words, an earlier final delivery is also an insurance policy against the unpredictable physics of old submarines. But let's talk capability, because schedules only matter if the platform is worth the urgency. The Barracuda class combines nuclear propulsion with advanced automation, reducing crew workload while enabling sustained operational tempo. That phrase can sound like marketing until you translate it into operational meaning. Fewer people required to run the boat, less fatigue over long patrols, and more capacity to maintain performance during extended deployments. France's defense leadership has emphasized that these submarines can deploy for roughly twice as long as the Rubis class. If that holds true in practice, the fleet's strategic value multiplies. A submarine that can stay at sea longer is not just more efficient. It is harder to predict, harder to track, and more capable of shaping an adversary's planning. And then there is the strike dimension. The Suffren class carries the MDCN naval cruise missile, giving France a long-range conventional strike option from beneath the sea. 
This is not ballistic missile deterrence, but it is still strategic. A submerged cruise missile platform introduces uncertainty into escalation calculations and complicates defense planning for any opponent. If you are trying to protect high-value assets, how do you defend against a weapon launched from a location you may not even know exists? That question is not academic, especially in an era where maritime contestation is intensifying and long-range precision strike is no longer a niche capability. So when the article describes the acceleration as strengthening France's undersea deterrence timeline, it is pointing at something broader than a delivery date. Attack submarines underpin deterrence in multiple indirect ways. They secure sea lines, hunt adversary submarines, collect intelligence, and create a moving shadow behind any fleet that dares to operate near contested areas. They also contribute to the protection of France's strategic forces by complicating the undersea environment around ballistic missile submarines. Deterrence is not only about the weapon you can launch, it is also about the confidence that your adversary cannot neutralize your options before you use them. In that sense, a modern SSN fleet is the quiet scaffolding that holds up an entire national defense posture. Now widen the lens to Europe. The possibility of finishing early stands out precisely because so many European naval programs have struggled with cost overruns and delays. Submarine construction is unforgiving, but it is also a measure of industrial competence. Delivering on time signals something to allies, competitors, and export markets. This shipbuilder can execute at the extreme end of complexity. That matters for naval groups' credibility and for France's broader defense industrial standing. It also matters geopolitically. Europe is relearning that maritime power is not a luxury, it is leverage. Still, this is not a victory lap yet. The language here is careful, could be accelerated, may be brought forward, if finalized, in defense procurement, a projected acceleration can be real or it can be an optimistic snapshot that collides with later reality. Supply chains can tighten, specialized labor can become scarce, and late-stage integration can uncover problems that were invisible earlier. The submarine does not care about political intent. It either meets standards or it does not sail. So the more disciplined interpretation is this. France appears to have reached a phase where the learning curve is paying dividends and the program's industrial rhythm is improving. If that improvement survives the final integration and trials, the strategic payoff is straightforward. And that payoff is not merely more submarines, it is continuity. It is the ability to maintain presence in the Atlantic, the Mediterranean and the Indo-Pacific without stretching old boats to the breaking point. It is the ability to conduct intelligence collection, special forces insertion and anti-submarine warfare with a platform designed for the current era rather than inherited from the last one. It is the ability to hold at risk targets at long range while remaining submerged and elusive. And perhaps most importantly, it is the ability to deny an opponent certainty. So ask yourself the core question. If a single year can compress the handover from an aging fleet to a modern one, what does that do to France's strategic calculus in the late 2020s? It reduces risk, it expands options, it tightens the window in which adversaries might bet on French transition weakness, and it sends a rare message in defense procurement. Sometimes a complex program does not only survive the schedule, sometimes it beats it.